After some discussion, I decided to build one. And, you, know, how, you know how one thing leads to another? I came up with a circuit, and here it is. This is this. And this circuit does, you know, we're talking about, we're talking about crossing signal lights, red, red. I think what he had was one of those really junky ones. It looks nice, but it goes blink, 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 blink. You ever see those? They don't necessarily, e, I don't like those at all. Okay. It has three sets of pins. The LEDs, or you can use incandescent bulbs if you want, go to these pins. This is kind of neat. There's two sets of pins there. Those are what are called triggers to start it or stop it. And this is where the real power is. There's three sets of pins there that you can put little jumpers on. Well, if you have three different sets of pins that you can put three different jumpers on, how many different ways can you arrange three pins on three sets of jumpers? Very good. We got a binary person. Who said that? Congratulations. You can arrange, if you have three digits, you can have all three off. I have to be careful about this. All three off, one on, right? The next one up. <laughs> and then these two, which is the third one, right? And then this one, this one, <laughs> and then these two, right? And then these two, and then these, it's eight, trust me. So you can put jumpers on there and get eight different behaviors out of this one chip. And there are also two potentiometers, volume controls, that do timing and speed, which is kind of cool. And there's the eight things. By the way, there's zero, zero, zero. There's the bad one. Okay? Here's what they'll do. If, and I have a board. I always try to make a board. Always try to make a board. I'm actually doing another, another uh, version of this seminar for an MRA group in a month or so. So I figured, ah, what the heck. I'll make a fancy board. Okay, at its simplest level, with all three jumpers off, it does that. whoop de doo And if you throw the first switch, which is this one, I think, now it's doing the exact same thing, but the speed is adjustable. Did it slow down? And sped up. Take it back to here. And by the way, this first one is always a half a second on, half a second off. So we got that one, this is the second one. The next one, it doesn't do anything until you push a button. And it'll stay on until you, and then you let go of the button, it stops. That's one of the triggers. And then the next one is these two up. This one's my favorite. You push one button, it starts. Push the same button, nothing happens. But if you push the other button, it stops. If you push this button, it starts. And if you push that button again, nothing happens. But if you push this one, it stops. Oh, you know what? I'm doing a bad thing. Let's try again. Uh, this needs to be reset in between each time you flip the switches by turning the power off, and I didn't do that. Uh, and then, this one flashes on and off at a rate determined by the first pot, and it stays on for a length of time. Which one is that? That is this one. It's, you know, notice how short a time, that's based on the second pot. So if you turn that, I don't know which way to go right now. There, it's longer. So you can say, okay, if, if somebody hits a read switch on the track, it'll blink for five seconds or whatever that happens to be. And then I decided to get fancy. Remember we talked about PWM? If I go to uh, this one, whoop, this one, what's it doing now? Instead of flashing on, it's kind of, that's PWM, the pulse width modulation. And if I do that one, it gets on, and the other one turns it off. And the final one is, again, it'll stay on for a certain length of time. The thing that's cool about this, let me take these LEDs out. Were those pretty bright? Oh, we're not done. I talked about power transistors running the motors. I've got power transistors. See these big tabs up here? And if I put, you think John's lights are bright over there. Okay. These are halogen bulbs. Pretty good. 
Now that little bitty chip is running those bulbs. How? Because it's actually running a power transistor that's telling it what to do. And if I turn all of these guys off, it'll just do a half on, half on. Could you put a red plastic filter over that and have a real nice crossing signal, you know, inviting people to your railroad? Okay. Uh, those are MOSFETs, but you could use uh, um, TIP 101s, you know, Darlingtons. The other thing that's cool, question? Uh, just so you can actually like set up a crossing gate with a trigger switch on one end and a trigger switch on the other end. That's exactly, that was my objective. Yeah, the reason you have the two buttons, put a reed switch here and a reed switch here. When the locomotive has a magnet on it, hits the first one, it starts. When it hits the second one, it stops. Yeah. The other thing I want to show you that's pretty neat, if I can find it. Yeah, I get this huge table and I lose stuff. Maybe that's the problem. It's too big. Ah, here it is. This is pretty neat. You don't really need all that circuitry. A number of people have gotten these chips from me. I'll pass this around. That's the chip with some wires on it. None of that circuitry. And I've hardwired this one so it flashes based on the, this little pot has a little rod coming out of it. So I'll pass that around. If you go up, don't, don't force it because it's got a limited range. But you'll see that the speed changes. And on my web page, I show you how to do this. All you need to do is give it 5 volts or less. I'm giving it 3.7 from a battery here. And you can connect the pins together, hardwire them, so that that's all this is going to do. You can't tell it to do something else. But that's all you really need if you want it to do that. So I'm going to pass this around, hang on to the battery. And if the battery comes disconnected, you're welcome to plug it back in again. But red goes to red, black goes to black. If you put it in backwards, you blow up my chip. OK. Any questions on that? OK, connectors. Speaking of connectors, I just said don't plug that in backwards. Well, there are better connectors that don't do that. If you need connectors to connect cars together, maybe you have lights in your passenger cars, back to our buddies at Deal Extreme. I'll pass these around. These are great. These are polarized, so you couldn't plug it in backwards. They'll only go in one way. I soldered a couple together. Look at the price. You get a bag of 10 pair for $2.78, including shipping. Now, you can't be in a hurry. It takes a couple weeks to come from China. I don't know what kind of slow boat they use. But that's what you get for less than 3 bucks. And there's one that you can play around with. Low current, I would say no more than an amp, amp and a half, something like that. What if you want to go for high current? Neil was saying that there's some connectors that he needs to do with, or no, rather, uh, that need high power. Look at these guys. Here's a picture. These little guys come, they're expensive, $6.26 for 10 pair. If you go to some of the Radio Control Hobbies websites, these are like four or five bucks a pair. And they're the exact same thing. Here's one you can put together and pull apart. And somewhere there's a little box. Here. Here's what you get for your six bucks. Connectors. I use, we use these on our modules, our HO modules, to connect the DCC. Works beautifully. And they are polarized. You can't put them in backwards. Well, I guess if you were really, really strong. But, yeah. Okay. Third connectors. And I hesitated to put this slide up because I didn't want them to run out. And if I tell people, you know, so I bought a thousand of them the other day. I figured, now I can tell you. These are great. Everybody heard of electronic gold mine? It's also called gold mine electronics. These little guys, this is amazing. These are the kind of cables that are inside of your desktop computer that connect the LEDs to the motherboard. But they're already pre-wired. There's a, there's a female connector on either end. It's got an LED in one end and nothing in the other. These are 50 for two bucks. I want to say that again. So when I bought a thousand, it was not a big investment. I use these all the time for connectors. And the little gizmo that plugs into the other end, they also sell that, that little guy. And I'll pass some of those around so you can see them. These are great. Absolutely great. 
And they have a coupon going right now. If you spend 60 bucks, you get 10% off or something, I mean, or 10 bucks off. So they even become less expensive. Okay, questions up to there. We're doing okay. If I didn't have you, I wouldn't have any questions at all. <laughs> all right, do you remember the pendulum? Those of you that were with me in other years, this is a pendulum that I had sitting here, and what it is is just a rod, there's a coil down here and a, a, a magnet, and it just spun. Well, we were doing a, a layout for Children's Hospital in Pittsburgh, a G-scale layout, uh, the Pittsburgh Garden Railway Society, and what I came up with is this little guy here that I mentioned to you before we got started. You'll notice he stops and starts. This is the exact same thing. It's a pendulum inside of that that's a jar from Skippy Peanut Butter or something, is a coil and a small circuit and a pickaxe. And what the pickaxe is doing is turning it on and off at different rates because at some point he'll do a 360. I don't know if you've been watching him, but he will eventually do a 360. So if you've gotten an idea about doing something, the pickaxe can animate or make it do something fancier than you initially would have anticipated that it could do. 